Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Walking Tall, released in the year 2004. The movie opens up with Chris Vaughn, a Special Forces Army veteran returning to his hometown, Kitsap County in Washington. On his way, he notices a closed old mill which used to provide employment to the majority of the people in the town. When he's reading the closure notice of the mill, he's approached by the town's sheriff, Stan Watkins. The sheriff recognizes him as a special forces soldier and offers him a ride to his home. At first, Chris refuses the ride, but when Watkins insists, he has no choice but to get in. After a while, Chris reaches home where he's welcomed by his sister, Michelle. In no time, Chris's father and mother also come outside to welcome him. His family hasn't seen him in years, and his nephew, Pete, has grown significantly. The next morning, Chris can be seen repairing the wooden staircase present at the house's entrance. At the same time, his high school buddy, Ray, arrives there and greets him. When Chris offers him beer, the latter reveals that he's stopped consuming drugs and alcohol and has been clean for the last 14 months. Later, he invites Chris to a football game with some of their high school classmates, to which Chris agrees. In the next scene, Chris and Ray arrive at the ground and unite with their old friends. Their game is against the team of Jay Hamilton, who is also Chris's old friend and belongs to one of the richest families in Kitsap County. At present, Hamilton is the owner of the biggest casino of the town. Soon, Hamilton's other teammates also arrive there, including the bouncers of his casino. With this, the game begins, and Hamilton's team can be seen playing roughly by attacking the other players. During the game, Chris observes his nephew Pete hanging out with a group of boys who are using marijuana. The game is going well until Hamilton's main man, Booth, intentionally attacks Chris and damages his knee. However, Chris lets it slide, and the game ends. Before leaving, Hamilton invites Chris and his teammates to his casino. Later, Chris calls Pete and advises him to stay away from his drug addict friends, but the little kid dismisses him and drives away in his small motorbike. At night, Chris, Ray, and some of his friends arrive at the casino as planned. They enter the place and are surprised to see the environment there, with hot ladies walking around and entertaining the customers. Soon, Chris meets up with Hamilton, who urges his men to provide Chris with VIP treatment. Wasting no time, Chris is taken away to one of the exclusive dancing booths of the casino. Here, he's left alone to enjoy watching a stripper perform for him. After a few minutes, he discovers that the lady is none other than his high school love, Denny. When Denny recognizes Chris, she stops her performance and closes the shutter. Chris is also disappointed to see her work as a stripper. Following this, he returns to the casino floor and finds Ray playing a random game. He then approaches his older friend, Smitty, who's gambling at a dice table. Chris notices that the dealer conducting the game is cheating by using loaded dice. When Chris tries to confront the dealer for his cheating, the latter calls security and there ensues a fight between the bouncers and Chris. Though at first Chris manages to beat them, he's soon overpowered by three bouncers who tase him and bring him to the basement. There, the head of the casino security, Booth, snatches Chris's special forces locket and uses a sharp blade to make cuts around his body. After torturing Chris, they leave him on the side of the road, thinking that he's dead. However, Chris wakes up and somehow manages to stop a moving truck for help. In the following scene, Chris can be seen at the hospital, badly injured. Fortunately, the doctors are able to save him and inform Chris's family that he will recover soon. After that, Chris is brought back to the house, where he rests and enjoys his time with Ray and Pete. Pete helps Chris to do his exercise and also prepares food for him. Slowly, Chris starts to recover and gets back into his daily routine. One day, while Chris is repairing the old staircase, Hamilton arrives at his house and apologizes for whatever his men did to him. He then offers to make Chris the head of security of his casino, but Chris kindly refuses his offer. Hearing this, Hamilton asks Chris to give it a second thought, but Chris replies that it's his final decision. After that, Hamilton provides Chris with some money as compensation for the incident, but Chris refuses to accept it and informs him that he will soon file a report against his casino. In the following scene, Chris brings his case to the local sheriff, Watkins. But to his surprise, Watkins mentions that the case has already been examined and that there's insufficient evidence to punish Hamilton's security guards or to close the casino. Instead of writing the report, Watkins informs Chris that after the mill was closed, the casino became the main source of revenue for the town, 
Hence, it's impossible to close the casino or punish the owner. Frustrated, Chris leaves the station, but not before informing the sheriff that he's going to expose the illicit activities of the casino. The next day, when Chris returns home after a short meeting with Denny, he's shocked to find out that his nephew has suffered from a drug overdose. Turns out that Pete consumed crystal meth, a rare and expensive drug. When Chris confronts Pete's buddies and inquires about the source of the drug, they inform him that the casino security guards privately supplied them and are selling it to the whole town. Enraged, Chris returns to his house and takes out his old shotgun. Despite his father trying to stop him, he drives towards the casino. In the next scene, Chris arrives at the casino but somewhat controls his anger. He ditches the shotgun and instead carries a wooden log inside. He then starts smashing the gambling machines and the interior of the casino. In no time, Hamilton's guards arrive there and attack him. Chris fights them with the help of the wooden log, breaking their hands and legs. He also beats up Booth and takes his locket back from him. Before leaving, he launches his wooden log at a mirrored window and notices Hamilton looking at all the chaos. Unfortunately, he is quickly surrounded by the police as he tries to drive away. He is then arrested by Watkins for assaulting the security guards and destroying the casino. In the next scene, Chris can be seen at the police station conversing with a lawyer and requesting him to take his case. At the court's hearing, Hamilton presents several witnesses from his casino and all of them testify against Chris. They mention that he is a trained army officer and was out of control that day. Despite the accusations, Chris's lawyer is surprisingly silent, and this convinces Chris that he's also working for Hamilton. Hence, Chris dismisses him and requests the judge to let him handle his case independently. After getting the approval from the judge, he addresses the jury and the courtroom audience about Hamilton's casino that dispenses drugs and cheats its customers. He also declares his intention to apply as a candidate for sheriff, promising to clean up the town and the corruption. He then shows the jury his body wounds that were afflicted by Booth. Hearing all this, the jury comes to a conclusion in the favor of Chris and releases him from custody. The scene then fast forwards to the time when Chris has already won the election and is the new sheriff of the town. On his first day as sheriff, Watkins approaches him and suggests he keep all his deputies as they are trustworthy. However, Chris, who knows that all of them are corrupt, fires them on the spot and enters the station alone. Later, Chris confronts Hamilton while he's riding in his Porsche with his girlfriend. He stops the car and asks Hamilton to show his license and registration papers. Hamilton mocks Chris's new position and attempts to bribe him. Enraged, Chris leaves, but not before destroying the car's taillight and warning him to fix it soon. Following this, Chris visits Ray and asks him to join the police department as a deputy officer. At first, Ray refuses to do so, stating his own history of addiction, but when Chris mentions that he needs his help to destroy Hamilton's drug empire, he agrees to join. Soon, Chris and Ray can be seen arresting numerous drug dealers and punishing them. Eventually, they arrest Booth and perform a full body search. With an aim to take revenge on him, the duo start wrecking Booth's customized pickup truck in search of drugs and at last put him behind bars. At the station, Chris urges Ray to go to his home and keep an eye on his family, knowing that Hamilton will most certainly attack them. Chris then stays at the sheriff's office to look after Booth. At night, when Chris is having dinner, Denny pays him a visit. Turns out that she's resigned from her job as a casino dancer. After the revelation, Chris approaches Denny, kisses her, and the two make love in the station. The next morning, after not finding Booth around the casino, Hamilton orders his men to attack Chris's family and also the police station. Soon, Hamilton's henchmen arrive in front of the police station and blow up Chris's truck. After that, they continue firing at the station with their machine guns. Surprisingly, the ones firing at the station are none other than Watkins and his ex-deputy officers. At first, Booth becomes happy to see Watkins, but after realizing his vulnerable condition, he begs Chris to allow him out of the prison. Chris exploits his situation and pressures him to reveal about Hamilton's drug factory. Left with no choice, Booth discloses that the old mill is where the drugs are being manufactured. But sadly, before Chris can let him out of prison, he is struck by several bullets and killed. With Denny's assistance, Chris succeeds in eliminating all of the attackers, including Watkins. He then takes Denny and heads towards his home, where Ray and Chris's father are able to eliminate the henchmen who attacked them. 
After ensuring the safety of his family, Chris proceeds to the timber mill and uncovers a meth lab as well as Hamilton, who is patiently waiting for him. Hamilton tries to eliminate Chris by lowering him down a trap door with mill machinery, but Chris draws Hamilton down with him and the two plunge into a slide. Chris, whose leg is badly injured, runs towards the nearby forest with Hamilton chasing him with an axe. Before Hamilton attacks him with the axe, Chris manages to adjust his dislocated leg bone and defends himself with a tree log. Despite being injured, Chris overpowers Hamilton and defeats him in the fight. Chris then arrests Hamilton and locks him up in prison. The movie ends with Chris closing the illegal casino and reopening the old timber mill, providing employment to the people. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.